ओम ज्ञान चिदंधन शलाकया so today is a very auspicious day for our Matthias. Even though most people here don't realize it, Srila Prabhupada has come and he's needed from. Srila Prabhupada is already here because wherever his instructions are followed, he's also there. As Srila Prabhupada writes in the beginning of his Srimad Bhagavatam, he says, this is dedicated to my spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasvati Thakur Goswami Prabhupada. Uh, he lives forever in his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. So as much as we are following him, Prabhupada, then he will be with us. But today is especially auspicious because Prabhupada has been installed in this. Now, just like I was saying, the people of Almetyov, they don't know about this auspicious occasion. Prabhupada's whole appearance in this world was auspicious, of course. He manifested his presence in the world from 1896 to 1977. And particularly he became prominent in the eyes of the world from about 1967 through to 66 through to 77. Of course it wasn't that Prabhupada was any less of a pure devotee before the success of his preaching developed. He was always a pure devotee. Uh, he was preaching throughout his life. But somehow or other the effect didn't manifest until towards the end of his manifest appearance. Still, most of the people of the world don't know about Prabhupada. People now, mostly people throughout the world, at least they've heard of Hare Krishna. At least we can say, yes, in most of the world, in both the Americas, Western Europe, Australia, India, of course, most countries, people they know, at least they've heard Hare Krishna. Still there are large areas where people don't even know about this Krishna conscious movement at all. Just like Krishna. here in Russia, many people still don't know what is the Hare Krishna movement. Although gradually they're getting to know. Still many people look at us in surprise when we're dressed like this. But uh, in other places where we've been dressed like this for so many years, then they're not surprised. Just like in central London or in Dublin or so many cities of the world, they expect to see our devotees. Sometimes they thought Devotees, they don't see them for some time. It's like in New York, I heard, there used to be many, many devotees, now there are less. So people are asking, what happened? Where did you all go? They expect to see us. I was preaching for some time with another devotee, there were only two of us, in Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. So uh, we, we had our center in the center of the city, which is very convenient. We used to walk to all the places we had to go to. So actually many thousands of people saw us every day because it's a crowded city center. So one year we went to the Maipo festival and we stayed together in India for about uh, two months, I think. Then we went to get our visas in the Thai consulate in Calcutta. So of course we came dressed like this. And the man in the visa department, he said, uh, where have you been? I right, haven't seen you in Bangkok recently. Okay. We're missing seeing you. So even two men just... We were, of course, we were mostly busy in printing books at that time, getting books translated and printed. But uh, just by walking around, so many people have come to see this Hare Krishna. So like this, gradually people all over the world are coming to know about Krishna consciousness. Krishna. There are still some important areas where Krishna consciousness is not so well known. Of course, Krishna consciousness is now spreading quite nicely in Africa. But in uh, North Africa, in the Arab countries, in 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 the Arab countries outside the CIA, in the Muslim countries outside the CIS, the progress of our movement has been very slow and difficult. And another area Price where our movement has to work very carefully and slowly underground is China, which is one third of the world's population in one country. So there's plenty of work to do if anyone wants to take up preaching of Krishna consciousness. There's no shortage of work. Even right here in Almetios, there's so much to do. Bodhis are here, they shouldn't think that to have one dacha, a little chanting, this is enough. You want to have Prabhupada books in every home, chanting in every home. This is our aim. Prabhupada used to say, think big, think big for Krishna. Try to shoot the rhinoceros. This is an example given. If someone goes to shoot a rhinoceros, it's a very difficult thing. Because the rhinoceros, his whole skin is so thick, if you shoot a bullet from one inch away, it will simply bounce off. The only way to kill a rhinoceros is to shoot him between the eyes which is rather a dangerous attempt because the rhinoceros has a habit of charging people who try to shoot him. He's quite competent to kill you also. He's more likely to kill you than you are likely to kill him. So if you try to shoot a rhinoceros, 
If you succeed, everyone will see, oh, what a wonderful thing you have done. And if you don't succeed, everyone will say, well, it was impossible anyway. So if you try to do something wonderful for Krishna, where is the harm? If we can't get everyone in our meteors coming to Mangalati and chanting and dancing, then what is the harm? At least Krishna will be pleased if we try. And if we try, certainly some people will start. But really Krishna wants to see us in Sri Krishna wants this movement spread all over the world. Most devotees in India, up, up till about 30 years ago, they were thinking, they weren't even thinking about spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. But Prabhupada was thinking about it every moment. And he went to the West and he did the impossible. So Prabhupada showed that it is possible to make devotees in every circumstance. And we're seeing that practically here in the ex-communist countries, where we didn't think it was possible that Krishna consciousness could be spread openly. Even a few years ago, we didn't think it was possible. Now we see that Krishna consciousness is spreading very nicely. But we shouldn't be content just with whatever level of Krishna consciousness is going on. We should think that Prabhupada has given us this wonderful gift, so we should try to give this to others. There's a famous letter from Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada wrote many, many letters in which he gave all kinds of important instructions and advice. So once he got a telegram from Los Angeles informing him of the wonderful book distribution results, and Prabhupada sent back a very nice letter. Of course, all his letters are very nice. Some of them they may be in the mood of chastisement. This one was in the mood of great encouragement. So Prabhupada said that this is the way to repay the spiritual master. He said actually it's not possible to repay the spiritual master. Who gives you Krishna consciousness, you cannot repay them. It's like if someone gives you a million rubles, you can pay him back by giving a million rubles. Because it's in your capacity to get that much money and give it back to him. But if someone gives you Krishna consciousness, how can you repay? Because Krishna consciousness is unlimited. So you remain eternally a debtor to the spiritual master. Prabhupada said that if you at all want to repay your debt to me, then you should preach vigorously like me. Prabhupada was spreading the mercy. And he pushed his disciples, you also go, spread the mercy. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada was very much anxious that after he left this world to go and preach somewhere else, his disciples would carry on this movement. In the same way, his disciples are carrying on, and the disciples of the, of the disciples, they also have to carry on. Doing the same thing, it's not very difficult. You simply chant Hare Krishna, preach to others, follow very seriously yourself, and if Krishna is so pleased, then others will also come forward to be Krishna conscious. They also need training to follow all the principles very nicely. Uh, follow all the principles, of course there are four main principles. No meat eating, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling. These are four do-nots. And there is one do, you must do it. Yeah. Which is to chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Of course Prabhupada, you know, if you see his letters, he'll again and again, he'll write in the letters to his disciples. Always follow the regulated principles very carefully and chant 16 rounds offenselessly. So it's a very simple process. If you follow it, then if you follow that sincerely, then certainly Krishna will bless us. So many people, times people come asking for blessings. The blessings are already there. You just have to take them. Not this kind of blessing, please cure the pain in my eye. But uh, the blessing, how to become Krishna conscious. It is already given, the process is already good. So we simply have to follow that and spread it to others. This was unique about Prabhupada. Among all the contemporary Vaishnavas, Bhakti Sijan Saraswati Thakur, he was a vigorous preacher and he made many disciples. But among them, one took up that same vigorous preaching mission, preaching strongly, pushing. Prabhupada used to say this is a pushing movement. He said, my spiritual master is pushing me. I am pushing you and you should push others. So push others means what? Sometimes our devotees think that dancing in Kirtan, that's the meaning of the pushing movement. We push them around. But when Prabhupada said it's a pushing movement, he didn't mean that. Pushing means pushing others to be Krishna. Not just oh, everything loose. There should be some pressure to preach to others. And if you're not Krishna conscious, why not? Uh, why don't you take up this opportunity to perfect your life? Preaching to people, so we're preaching to people, so if they accept the philosophy, at least superficially if they accept it, then the next stage is that then why don't you take it up? That is pushing. I'm interested in Krishna consciousness, but I'm also interested in smoking cigarettes. Why? Stop it. This is pushing. Pushing must be there. You cannot say that everything is all right. Everything is all the same. That I worship Krishna in my own way. This is all bogus. And that means sahajiya. Sahajiya means they want to worship Krishna in their own way. But that is not one of them. 
bona fide means you have to follow Shastra. Prabhupada was always quoting Shastra. That is the symptom of an Acharya. Acharya doesn't mean someone who invents something. This is very common in modern India. In recently this was introduced by some rascals that uh, it's a very good thing if a sadhu can invent something new. Yes. Everyone should invent something new, some new kind of meditation. Just like this rascal Rajneesh. His idea of meditation was that you scream as long and as loud as you can. And then when you're finished, then that's meditation. Yes. Nothing in Shastra about this. But he decries Shastra. We don't need Shastra. Mm. He has become better than Shastra. He's a rascal. Anyone who doesn't follow Shastra is a rascal. Yes. Even if someone quotes Shastra, but they misuse it for their sense gratification, they're also a rascal. Mm. Two points. Those who don't follow and those who completely don't follow, they're rascal, and those who uh, make a show of following but don't show, don't follow properly, they're also rascal. How do you say that? That's that's again, we have to see Shastra. Shastra vidhim utrija bharatate kama karata nasa siddhim about nati nasu kam naparam vithim. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself says that don't, those who don't follow the Shastra, those who simply act whimsically according to their own lusty desires, what is their position? They cannot achieve perfection of life. They cannot achieve any happiness, and there is no question that they are going back to God. So, others may pretend to follow some kind of religious principles, but they don't follow properly. There are different varieties of these rascals, prominent among whom are Mayavadis and Sahajis. Mayavadis, they misinterpret. Shastra. This is uh, not something new. This Mayavad was not invented by Shankaracharya. Simply he propagated it in the world. And this is very popular, this idea that we are all one with God, I am God, because this is rascal philosophy. And everyone is a rascal. Vichadvesha Samutena, Vandra Mohena Bharata, Sarva Bhutani Samoham, Sage Yanti Parantapa. Everyone has come to this material world because they are rascal. Because they're envious of Krishna. They have so many uh, wrong desires. Therefore, they come to this material world. Therefore, this Mayabad is very attractive to the demons. Mayabad is such chastra. Yes. Shankaracharya here, Lord Shiva himself says that this is so-called chastra, but it's asa, it's all wrong. Prachandam bodhamuchita. It is simply covered Buddhism. Buddhism is already rejected. Vedna mania bodhaika nastik. Because the Buddhist state is not follow the Vedas, they don't follow Shastra, then they are already rejected as atheists. Veda Shrai Nastik Kavad Bodha Ke Odik But even worse than the Buddhists are the Mayavadis because they quote the Vedas but they have basically the same idea which is that there is no God. Asatyama Pratishtam Te Jagat Ahur Anishvaram Aparasparasam Phutam Kimanya Kama Hitikam In this way they become in the same category as the demons who say that there is no God in control. Truth. There's no basis to the universe. Mm. Everything simply happens by chance. Mm. The ultimate cause of everything is sexual desire. So people are very much attracted to Mayavad because they are demons. And some, sometimes Mayavadis they also pose as devotees. And sometimes people they, they even they have an idea that I'm a great devotee, but actually they're Mayavadis. Just like we see in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila that Raghunath Bhakta Goswami came from Varanasi to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri. So one man came to join him on the path and he carried his baggage even though Raghunath Bhatta didn't really want him to carry his baggage. It's he the said, way I want to serve you because you're a Brahmin, you're a Vaishnava. This man was always chanting Ram, 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 the name of Ram. So when they reached Puri, then Raghunath Bhatta came to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he introduced, this is this Ramdas, he's always chanting Ram Ram. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't very happy to see him. Because he could understand that in his heart, although he spoke like a Vaishnava, although he acted like a Vaishnava, in his heart there was the desire to become one with God. He was a Mayavad. You'll find many such people in India, they chant Bhajans, Krishna Nams, so many different But if you speak with them, they'll say, yes, the ultimate is to become one with God. There's no personal God. So I've met people, they worship Narayan, the, the Shalagram Srila, two hours every day. And then speak with him and he says, oh, God has no form. And very offensive things he was saying. Very much against this Krishna conscious movement. All wrong ideas. Another wrong idea, just like someone may think, I am Madhya Yashoda. Just like if someone thinks I'm Krishna, he's a Mayavad. So if someone thinks, I am Nanda Maharaj, or I am Madhya Yashoda, then he's also Mayavad. He's not Madhya Yashoda. He should aspire to be the servant of the servant of the servant. That is correct. So Mayavad is very dangerous. 
that is already rejected again and again in Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna. Abhajananti ma mura manishin tanamashritam param harmajananta. He says that anyone who thinks that my form, my my form, the Satchidananda Vigraha, that is just like an ordinary form of Maya, then he is a rascal, he is a mudha, an ass. Mukham Shri Ram Namadur Vibhavyam. The Rishabh Dev says that my body, that is not, you cannot understand that by word. Krishna is transcending the form, cannot be understood by our blunt material senses. Again and again in Gita, Krishna rejects this Mayavad. It's like, what is the basic or wrong idea of the Maya is? They say that Krishna, he's also, his body is also made of Maya. Mm-hmm. That Krishna's form <coughs> is a, a transformation of the mode of goodness. It's ultimately produced from the impersonal absolute. But Krishna directly rejects this wrong idea in Bhagavad Gita. Adhyaktam vyakti maapanam manyante maa buddhaya. He says, Whoever thinks that my personality is a manifestation of the unmanifest, such a person, he is a fool. So this Mayabad is very dangerous. Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastatavisha Jani. The author of Vishnu is to Srila Prabhupada because he smashed the Mayabad. It's not that Mayabad is simply some sect in India. Everyone in the material world is a Mayabad. They're all thinking that I am God. So sometimes some so called teachers come and they give some kind of philosophical platform to uh, coagulate this wrong idea in people's heads. But being a wrong philosophy, it's full of mistakes. It may seem that it is correct because people want to accept that which is incorrect. That is the nature of Maya. That uh, asat, what is that? Asat dere satta karimani. Those who are those who are determined to be forgetful of Krishna, she gives them a big illusion by which they think that which is unreal is real. Just like you see, people they are so busy to maintain their families. They don't think I'm going to be dead in a few years. They don't think what is the purpose of life. They're simply completely in darkness. They're not thinking at all. Passing on their lives like animals. And even people who do think, they think everything all wrong. Just like the scientists, they say all kinds of absurd things. Life is a product of matter. Future we will demonstrate it. The whole universe came out of nothing. There was a big, there was nothing, then all of a sudden there was something and it exploded. And here we are today, folks. All kinds of nonsense things they speak. And they make big scientific equations which are supposed to prove all their nonsense. And other people accept that they say, oh, this is something very good, because the scientists have said. And then again and again, whatever one scientist says, another scientist proves it wrong. So-called science means simply someone says something, everyone claps, and then someone else comes along and says, you're wrong. And they say, oh, sorry, never mind, we'll make a new theory. And they make a new theory and everyone claps, Nobel Prize. And someone else comes and says, oh, that's wrong. They say, oh, never mind, we'll make a new theory. And they call this advancement. They think we're making, because we found out that theory was wrong, so we we came to a more advanced theory, and then we found that was wrong, so then we got a more advanced theory. But none of their theories are advanced because they're all wrong. How should we, if something is wrong, and you, if you have one wrong theory, and you change it to another wrong theory, how can you call it advancement? But people are very enamored by science. People become very disturbed when we speak against science, as if we're speaking against their mother and father or something. They think science, or oh, science is so wonderful. Science yeah. has done so many wonderful things. But what has science done for you? Science helped you to conquer over death? Oh, but we can go to the hospital and get injections. We can die in the hospital. Science has given us, we'll have so many tubes coming in and out of our body. So that we can, and then they'll measure the brain waves and the heartbeat. And we'll die very scientifically. So this is wonderful advancement. You are a fool. If you think this is advancement to die with a tube in your arm and and an electric wire coming out of your brain, then you're a fool. If you think your advancement, if you think this is advancement, then your intelligence is no more than that of a child. Child, you give him some toy, he thinks this is very wonderful. So we have little toys, so many machines, and you're thinking, oh, this is wonderful. But still you have to die. You become a cat and a dog in your next life. You go on suffering, 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 scientifically suffering. Uh, you can have, now you can have uh, run over by a car. So yes. Scientifically, you can suffer. And you can breathe in all the pollution. Just like all these cities, you wake up in the morning, you want to breathe some fresh air, and all you can breathe is the smell of gas. So very scientifically, we're being poisoned every time you breathe. So where is the advancement? Prabhupada was pointing out all these things. Prabhupada was uncompromising. Chopping technique. 
Chop, chop, chop. Don't compliment. Prabhupada, he spoke out against everything except pure Krishna consciousness. No Mayavada. Kick it out. Kick that in the face. This is the problem. Prabhupada, is one conversation Prabhupada said, there's no need to discuss with the Mayavada. Just kick them in the face. So you think you're God? I kick you in the face. What will you do, Mr. God? You think you're God? What will you do? God is supposed to be the most powerful. If I kick you in the face, what will you do? Similarly, scientists, Prabhupada was smashing. You're cheaters. You're rascals. And he used to say they're not even gentlemen. Because they they deny the existence of God. Cheating people. You'll see, you'll see they're written, science has proved that there is no God. Such rascal them. How can they prove? It's not, it's not within their capacity to prove or not prove. Everything, just like United Nations. Everyone thinks the United Nations is such a wonderful organization. Very good idea that uh, they come together and they discuss and they solve all their problems. Robert said they're just like a pack of barking dogs. Just like dogs, if you bring them together, then they must bark with each other. They must fight with each other. Because they're dogs. So, so-called civilized men, they're also dogs. Because their only interest in life is to eat, sleep, mate and defend. If yes. anyone comes to their country, they say, Who are you? We what do you want here? Just like if you go in any area where the dog is staying, they'll do the same thing. Ro, ro, ro. I'm the dog here. You don't then. come here. I'm a dog. So same thing, immigration department. This is, this is our country, don't come here. Bark, yes. bark, bark. All right, three month visa, then get out. So Prabhupada was saying, what is this United Nations? Simply a pack of dogs, that's all. So Prabhupada was uncompromising. This was the way he preached. He wasn't spreading some sentimentalism. Another sectarian religion. He wanted no, people to understand religion. the science of Krishna consciousness. Not that he was spreading something cheap. Just like the Sahajiyas, they are very cheap. They so don't follow scripture, they simply imagine themselves to be advanced. But that is very dangerous. That misleads people away from the proper path of devotion. Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Adi, Pancharatran, Vidhim, Vinava, Aikantiki, Hare, Bhaktiya, Utpate, Yaivakalpati. If someone says that I'm a devotee of Krishna, but he doesn't follow the Shastras, then he simply makes a disturbance in society. And we see that. Even here in Russia, there are plenty of Sahajiyas. They follow Krishna consciousness in their own so-called way. They don't want to follow spiritual authorities. Without learning from the bona fide authorities, without following them or without surrendering to them, they want to represent themselves as great authorities on Krishna consciousness. Without becoming a student, without becoming a disciple, they want to become a guru. They represent themselves as some big acharya. And foolish people, they're attracted to such cheaters. Because they offer some cheap version of so-called Krishna consciousness. That you just have chant Hare Krishna and I'll give you Brahmin initiation even though you don't follow any principles. You, you, don't, you just be nice to everybody. Don't be nasty to anybody. Accept this kind of uh, You should uh, just be Krishna conscious in the... In a nat just be natural. That's what they say. That's what these people in, in England. That's, just be natural. Be natural means if you feel like smoking or if you feel like having illicit sex, you shouldn't inhibit yourself. You shouldn't try to suppress your natural feeling. This is Freud's so-called philosophy. According to Freud, all the problems in the world are because people, they don't follow their natural inclinations. According to Freud, then we should all just live like animals. There's the difference between a human being and an animal. That a human being, he can discriminate what is right and what is wrong, and thus control his senses. So an animal be. cannot. Dog, he, there's no question of sense control. So, people just say, oh, you should just be natural. Chant Hare Krishna a little bit, smoke a little bit, and everything's very good. And no one should tell me I'm doing anything wrong. This is great rascal thing. People are presenting that it's all right to be Krishna conscious and do all this. This is great rascal then why? Because most people are not very serious about anything. Most people want some cheap kind of religion. They're not very serious to be free from birth and death and to surrender to Krishna. They want a religion which doesn't threaten their sense of They like this kind of religion. You go to church, uh, Dear Father, forgive me of all my sins. Okay, you're forgiven. Then again next week, the next stock of sins. So like this, week after week after week. And just, Father, forgive my sins. Okay. Father, forgive my sins. On and on and on. No intention of giving up sinful life. So oh, Krishna Kosh is not meant to be like that. Thank Krishna Kosh is not meant for rascals. Everyone is a rascal in this material world. But Otherwise, what are we doing here? But Krishna Kosh is to make us into civilized people. Oh, suitable for yeah. entering into the spiritual world. There's yeah. no cheating like that in the spiritual world. Not dancing in Ras Lila, then you go and hide behind one of the trees and smoke a cigarette. Maybe you think you can do this here in this world. But you can't prepare yourself for the spiritual world like that. So Krishna consciousness is meant for sadhus. Sadhu means who is sat. Hmm. 
sadhava shina doshas to such shabda sadhu vachaka yesham acharanam yastu sadhachara sadhichate sadhu means sad means sad means that which is proper which is correct sadhava means sadhu shina doshas to be free from all sinful activities uh, the the word sat or which means correct or proper that should be applied in the lives of sadhus. There's no, in other words, there's nothing improper in their lives. And the behavior of sadhus, what they do, that is called sadhacha, or proper behavior. So Prabhupada came to teach this. He didn't come to spread yet another kind of cheating religion. So this real religion, that is approved by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead himself comes to teach such a religious process. Sarvadhanam paritya jama mekam sharanam raja. Give up all this nonsense cheating in the name of religion and simply surrender to me, Krishna's name. So, Krishna's representatives, they come to teach the same thing. So, Krishna, he wants that. He gives strength to such a devotee who preaches, who preaches his message as it is. Well, so, yes. that is Krishna Shakti Viha. Kali Kale, Kali Kale, Yuga Dharma Nama Shankitan, Krishna Shakti Viha Mahi Thakamatan. In this Kali Yuga, the religious process for the age is the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. And one who is not empowered by Krishna, he cannot spread this Sankirtan movement. So we should know that our strength comes in following scripture. Purity is the force. Hmm. That you know, four maxims. Books are the basis. Uh, what's the next one? Hmm? Purity is the principle. Purity is the force. The purity is the force comes last, isn't it? Yeah. So what's the second one? Purity is all rule. No, I can't remember. How can I forget such an important thing? But utility is the principle and then purity is the force. So purity is the force means we have to follow very strictly Krishna consciousness and reach it as it is. Then Prabhupada will be pleased with us and we will be qualified to be proper followers of Srila Prabhupada in the Parampara system. Hare Krishna. Preaching is the essence. 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 the essence. Preaching is the essence. Preaching um, we're speaking about this, we're the heavy, we should not criticize some way. Translate? Why not? Who said we should not? Krishna himself does, and he says that he who preaches this message is very dear to me. That is necessary. Preaching means you have to show people what is right and what is wrong. People are very deeply in ignorance, and mostly they want to accept some cheap version. So, preaching means to cut all the wrong ideas. When I, uh, I was preaching to one person to stop smoking, uh, and uh, the new uh, strong uh, following principles, <coughs> he said, I'm just not prepared still. Um, I, I would like to do this. So, what we can, what we can say to this, such kind of person. If you'd like to do it, then why don't you do it? When you have a plate of food in front of you, you don't say, I'd like to eat it, and then you just sit there and don't eat it. You eat it. it. If you want, you do it. So many people all have given up smoking by Krishna consciousness. But, but he behaves like uh, in Krishna consciousness. But now, how how do you say behave in Krishna consciousness if smoking? That's not Krishna consciousness. He says that he should just become ripe after some time. That's your idea. You become ripe. After some time, always after some time. How much time? Always tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. These are very basic principles. We're saying if you want to be serious about Krishna conscious, you have to follow them. There's no question, there's no compromise on this. If you don't want to be Krishna conscious, that's something else. So you go smoke, drink, eat meat, go to hell, do whatever you like. But if you're going to come to Krishna consciousness, then do it properly. Don't misrepresent Srila Prabhupada by posing as a devotee and then not following the basic principles. Of course, we don't force. Everyone is welcome to come and join with us, chant Hare Krishna, take prasad. But if you're going to represent yourself as a devotee, 
uh, then you should follow properly. Yeah, if you say, well, I like the Krishna conscious movement, but I'm, I'm not following, I'm not very strong, but anyway, I come, I give some donation. All right, that's accepted. Not yeah. a very good standard, it's not the proper standard. But at least the person is not pretending to be something which he's not. And if you represent yourself as a follower, as a devotee of Krishna, and you don't follow even the most basic things, then that is misrepresentation. Do you see the difference? But what about, should we allow, allow to such not sincere person to stay in the temple? If you're not following the principles of Krishna. It's a very basic <coughs> principle that Srila Prabhupada taught. It says sometimes you come into such a state that you just, you know, you become angry and you do, you have some problems and all these things, but you overcome this by your, you know, power of the anger. And then he says, you know, like, you... I don't understand. You overcome your problems by the power of your anger? You know, you, you are unhappy, but you are, like, determined, and then you solve your problem, not that you, like, determined and, you know, like, happy, not, you know, like, you... I can't understand what's being spoken about. He's saying that, uh, yes, can you explain what is happening, why man becomes like in an in, in angry mood and why anger comes? That is anger comes. Bhagavad Gita. Kama Isha, Krodha Isha. Krod, anger follows lust. When lust is frustrated, then one becomes angry. Kama, Krodha, Vijaya. Any other question? For example, one person was beaten very severely. And in the uh, next day, he went to this person and uh, beat him back and even killed him. How we can consider the situation? Two people in Maya, they are misusing their life. Mm. Is there any meaning if you try to explain to animals Bhagavad Gita or something like this? No, no, no. Good. Give them to the Then why we should try to explain Bhagavad Gita to the people who like on the level of the animals? Mm. We don't so much. For ordinary people, let them chant Hare Krishna take prasad. Actually, traditionally, this knowledge should not be spoken anywhere and everywhere. That traditionally, the disciples should come to the Guru, then the Guru tests if he is ready for hearing, then only after he sees, then he instructs him. That is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that that's being spoken anywhere and everywhere. And mostly we can't speak. Preaching to the public means speaking at a very basic level. Mostly, if we speak philosophy at all, we're just trying to convince that you're not with body. But very simple examples. Yeah. People are so dull that they, even then they find it very difficult to understand. It's actually <coughs> difficult for people, for most people to understand this Krishna conscious movement. Okay. Because they're so dull they can't understand the most basic thing, that we're not this body. That's why you'll see now, just like in, in Russia, there's, there's so many newspaper articles because for Russian people it's something new. So we tell them we're doing this and we're doing that and some basic points about philosophy I need the names of God. But we don't expect many people to understand this movement, at least not very deeply. It's like yeah. preaching is difficult. So preaching it's means it's to bring people from the level of animals to the level of pure devotion. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. That's all part proof. So along with the preaching, chanting, presiding distribution, they should come. It's very important our devotees also go out and chant the holy names in public. Let people hear the holy names. Any other question? Is there any the recommendation of how to uh, how husband should associate with his wife and then with his daughter, young daughter, and then with uh, all the people who he can he can meet in the, his work? Yes, yeah, recommended. Pandita Samadarshana. One should see everyone is a everyone is spiritual. Everyone is to go be a Christian. Kick in the head by Pandita. I'm so lucky. We should act with everybody in such a way that they may become closer to Krishna. That is the Christ. basic principle of relationships for devotees. And the details, of course, every time, place and circumstance is different. So that requires a little intelligence and maturity. But if you say Hare Krishna to everybody, that's a good start. When we meet devotees or anybody, we can say to them Hare Krishna. Even people, they have no idea what Hare Krishna means. It's good, let them hear. See some animal, cat or dog, it's good to say Hare Krishna. Let them Sama. hear. You see some some people on the street, they're looking at you, what is this? You can say to them, Hare Krishna. You don't know what it means. You don't have to know what it means. They hear the sound, they become benefited. I used to do that a lot in England. They used to say, used to say to you, Hare Krishna. You don't know what to say. Say, oh, oh, good day, good morning. They say, 
Yeah, they may. So that's good for them also. If they say good day to a devotee. Prabhupada used to go for his morning walks. So in England it's a habit when you see people in the morning, you say good morning to them. So early in the morning Prabhupada is walking, people would be coming, he would say to them good morning. And they would say back to him good morning. So the devotees asked Prabhupada, why are you saying good morning to them? Prabhupada would say, then they'll say good morning to me, then they'll be benefited. Prabhupada commented on the British saying to each other good morning. So he he said, good morning is never good. Their whole day is miserable. Especially in England, the morning it's always dark and cold. So they're saying, they're saying good morning, hope against hope. Yes, they're hoping good. for something good, but there's nothing good. Only the good thing is if they can see a devotee and hear the holy names. So distributing books also. Some book distribution is going on here. Regularly, some devotees are done. You do something good for others. Now you've been so lucky to come in contact with Krishna consciousness. Now you have to go and give that to others. So please, also you try to distribute these books. Even if you're busy in other things, at least you can go out sometime in the week. It's every devotee's duty to help to spread this Krishna conscious movement. Bhakti Bhado Kale Nakori Adok. He says that any time which is an, an obstacle to devotional service, I won't uh, respect that or give much importance to that. Was it? Yeah, any time which is not any any time which is a which is an obstacle to devotional service. Actually, I can't exactly understand what this means. A, a time which is inimical to devotion. But maybe we can give some suggestion. Just like people in Russia, they may say that the time of Brezhnev was very good. Please. During that time, everything was wonderful. But devotees don't think it was wonderful because during that time, they were not allowed to perform their Krishna conscious activities. Not. So that suggestion I'm giving to Bhakti Bahir Muk Ninja Jani Jani Pur. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Bhakti Nautakur says that even my own relatives, my own family members, if they are against devotion to Krishna, then I will consider them outsiders. Bhakti Bhadika Sprina Karibo Varjan. Any desire that is, again, the same word, that is an obstacle to devotional service, I will give it up. So this is needed. We all have so many different desires, millions and millions of desires. Even there are so many desires which may be in our hearts in seed form. We're not even aware of them. But whatever they are, we have to give them up. If we want Krishna, we have to give them up. This is Bhakti Nautakura is recommending. Not even to consider them. We may have desires to be rich, to be famous, to go to the heavenly planets. We may have some desire just to live a comfortable life. There's so many varieties of material desires. Narottam Dash Thakur says, Vaya Maya Das Kari Nana of Lulash. Becoming the servant of Maya has so many different desires. So what to do with them? Sometimes people come and say, I can't control my mind. I have so many different desires. So what to do? Bhakti Nautako says, give them up. You should know what they all are, they are all useless. But also described in the Bhagavad Gita that we are living in the material world and we are entangled in the material world, which is just like a whole complex banyan tree. If you have seen a banyan tree, it's very, it's one tree is like a, almost like a forest. It expands wide, wide, with, and many, from, from the branches, more roots come down, and it makes more trunks. It's very huge and very complex. Okay. How to get through this? Krishna says, cut your way through. Use the sword, the sword of knowledge and detachment. Two blades, one side is knowledge, one side is detachment. This example is used many times in scripture. Give it up, give it up, give it up. And take up the desire to serve. I won't take any food which is offered by non-devotees. Hmm. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommends. He's showing here Anna Kaile Gushtahima. If we eat food given by non devotees, the mind becomes contaminated. So what's wrong with the mind being contaminated? Man Dushtahile Nahe Krishna Sharan. If the mind is contaminated then we can't remember Krishna. Uh, 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 Krishna Vishwaran Hoile uh, Jiva Nishval. And if we don't remember Krishna then our life is Spoil, useless. So this is an important principle. We should only eat food 
given or coached by devotees. All these are very basic principles. Don't read things by non-devotees. Have to get absorbed in the newspaper. Important duty to read the newspaper from top to bottom every day. What is in the newspaper? One politician said this, another politician said that. Someone else got voted, and someone got killed. And mostly a bunch of lies anyway. They, 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 all these newspapers and magazines, they're simply giving a materialistic view of life. Just like if you, especially they have these magazines, like Time, Newsweek, or in India, India Today. I don't know if they have such things in Russia, maybe not yet. But anyway, they're simply they're simply promoting a materialistic concept of life. That so-and-so politician from the United Nations rushed to the scene of battle. No, they don't go to the scene of battle, they go to some negotiating table. Two countries are fighting, so a representative from the United Nations goes to meet their representatives in a five-star hotel at least 10,000 miles away from the fighting. And they discuss so many things. champagne. I remember Brown Vishnu Swami shortly once. Yeah, Showed me some, some newspaper. <laughs> and there was a photograph of these politicians in England. And they were making a new political party. Yeah. And they, they were holding a press conference. And on the table, some of them had beer and some had wine. And you could see from the looks of their faces, they're all completely drunk. They're on television. <laughs> National television. With all, and all big press reporters keep taking photos. They're all completely drunk. And these are the people who are supposed to lead the country. Big drunkards. Well, I think we should go uh, we should uh, uh, more parks. <laughs> more parks. So what does the newspaper mean? Someone killed someone else. One politician told a bunch of lies. Politicians, they don't know how to speak the truth. They're, they're practically incapable. Even if they speak something which is true, they have to mix it up with something which is untrue. And they may be afraid that if they speak something true, then people won't respect them as a proper politician. They're expert at presenting facts as unfacts. Not and you hear Vote for me and everything will be good. Here I am, come to, Hare Krishna, come to save you all. The solution to all your problems. Vote for me. So, newspaper means simply all the rascals are speaking. Okay. What the rascals have to say. So we should read Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, Purana Ramalam, Yad Vaishnavan, and Priyam. Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the devotees because it is spotless, it's pure. Because all these newspapers, just like you see, at least in England, I, the most popular newspaper. Why it's the most popular? Because every day they have naked girl photos. People are not interested to read any news. They are just want to see naked girl photos. And every day they see one girl, another girl, as if it's, it's as if it's something special. One girl, another girl. It's just puna puna charvita charvana. They have their wife or girlfriend at home. They think, let me see what's today's newspaper. What girl is there? Just oh, all rascal. Yes. Everything. Except Krishna consciousness is all masculine. And we should understand very clearly. My Krishna Thakur is teaching us not to be attached to this material world. Therefore he says, Jaha kichu bhakti bhakti kul goli jani, tajigo janane taha e nishtrayvani. He says, after going through describing so many different things, he says, whatever there is which is inimical to bhakti, now I make this firm determination to give it up, give it up. Bhakti nino bhakti prabhu charane. Bhagavati Shakati Prati Kulya Bhajana Bhakti Rotaka says that I'm falling at the lotus feet of you, Krishna, and begging the strength to give up everything which is unfavorable. So this is very important. We may understand that we should give up everything unfavorable. But for whatever reason, due to our misplaced attachments, we find it difficult to do so. We want to surrender to Krishna. But we feel so many material attachments. So we should pray to Krishna for the strength to do what we should do. Hare Krishna. So, any question? She is saying that uh, in your Brahmacharya book you are writing that until transcendental relationship would not... Uh, until between guru and disciple there is no transcendental relationship, uh, there is no meaning of... Uh, Position of guru and disciple, there is no meaning of their relationship, mm -hmm. they are not based on transcendental things. And she is asking uh, about. What does it mean, transcendental understanding? 
that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly what it's written there, but anyway, in the Russian edition. But uh, transcendental relationship means that the disciple accepts the Guru, here is someone who can lead me to Krishna. And therefore he surrenders to the Guru. Surrender means he accepts and whatever instruction he gives, I have to accept that. I am a fool, I don't know what is best for me. Therefore, I should follow the direction of someone who does. And the Guru takes the responsibility to direct the disciple properly. In the same way that he has heard from his spiritual master in the morning by Quran. This is a transcendental relationship. But if someone accepts a Guru just on, out of some sentiment, he looks nice. Or, uh, I don't, if I accept him as a Guru, I think he won't chastise me too much. He just tells nice stories. Or I want to accept a Guru so that he'll bless me so that I can be successful in my material life. This is not transcendental. Therefore, Guru, who is actually a Guru, he should be very careful to see the people who are accepting his disciples actually want a transcendental relationship and not a material relationship. So he's saying how to get some proper qualities and all the things to become a disciple. Proper quality means you have to be prepared to surrender. That is the basic quality. You should know, if you're going to accept a guru, you should have some idea what you're entering into. Okay. Just like if you're going to go to a shop to buy, for instance, a tape recorder, you have some idea what a tape recorder is, so that you have to take some preliminary information. Therefore, Shastra is there, devotees are there, they can guide us. And guru is also there, if you can recognize and accept. Any other question? Uh, it is said that uh, the external energy of the Lord is uh, acting upon devotees like uh, uh, material, uh, like spiritual energy, and mm. on non-devotees it acts like um, spiritual energy, material energy. And then she is asking, what is the difference between the spiritual energy and material energy? From Krishna's point of view, there's not much difference. They're all his energies. Devi, Isha, Gunamai, Namamaya, Duratya. Krishna and Bhagavad Gita says that this Maya is my energy. It's just like an electrician, he knows how to utilize electrical energy either for heating or for cooling. So they're all expansions, they're, 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 all these energies are coming from Krishna. So the material energy that acts to bewilder the conditioned soul, but that can also act on devotees to help them to come closer to Krishna. The same energy appears to act in the same way, but is actually, according to the individual, acting in a different way. For instance, uh, what, what is the activities of the material energy? That is giving a good result and bad result. Now, if, the, if a materialist gets a bad result, for instance, he has an accident, he is simply suffering his bad karma. But if a devotee has an accident, he takes it as a lesson from Krishna that I could die at any time, so therefore I should now be very serious about Krishna. Or some good result. If a materialist suddenly gets a lot of money, then he simply uses the money to go to hell. So but a devotee, a mature devotee, takes it as a gift from Krishna and uses it in Krishna's service. Actually, the material energy is also acting to help the materialist to come to Krishna. The purpose of the way she acts is the same for the non-devotees and for the devotees. The whole creation is set up for the benefit of the conditioned souls. The conditioned souls are thinking that the material universe is a place for my enjoyment. But the real purpose of the creation is to bring the conditioned souls back to Krishna. But because they are very inimical to the idea of serving Krishna, therefore the material energy acts uh, in such a way that they can be in the illusion of enjoying this material world. But ultimately she's acting in such a way that the conditioned souls may finally awake to their proper sense of Krishna consciousness. Any other question? All right, so we'll have Kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 